Okay, just a reminder before we get started with the afternoon, uh, we have table topics and go and vote for as many as you want, whichever ones you want to see. And the top voters are the ones we're going to talk about. So uh, markers are over there, just put a little hash mark. And uh, when we finish with the talks and start that, we'll know what we're going to talk about. Thanks. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So who here had the chicken wrap? The turkey sandwich? Woo! Veggie? All right. The chicken wrap is all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, our session is called Look, Ma, No Hands, Drupal, Gutenberg, and STC. And it's, it's mainly about our uh, overall approach to Drupal and, and how, how we're thinking about this from both a developer experience and a uh, editorial experience. This is Ivan. Yeah, hello, I'm Ivan Duarte. I'm, in, I'm a technical architect and a senior developer at Nagelino. So, and sometimes they call me the Gutenberg guy because I was the first trying to work in those Gutenberg things that I will present today. Yeah, and uh, my name is Mike Herschel. I'm a senior front-end dev at Agilina. I'm working on a uh, project right now for the U.S. federal court system uh, mm -hmm. where we have like 300-odd D7 sites pulling up to D10. Um, and I also do a lot of front-end core work. And Agilina, uh, we've been doing uh, government stuff for a pretty long time, a lot of, uh, a lot of great organizations that we've worked with. So, yeah. Um, so, as I said, this is our approach to Drupal, and uh, I would love to hear thoughts afterwards. Uh, you want to talk about how we got here? Yeah. Um, yeah, how do we get to this point and why we are trying to follow this approach? Uh, these are some of the things. We want to use Gutenberg, but it was a process. At the beginning, we didn't want to <laughs> use Gutenberg, but you will know the process. And then, also, we need to use USWDS because it's like a requirement for government sites in most of the cases. And we wanted to work with single directory components to provide a good developer experience for the theming. So that's what the, that was our journey to get to this point, to combine all those tools and to be able to create this experience. So yeah, why Gutenberg? Because maybe you are asking why Gutenberg for these government sites. And in 2021, uh, we win a contract, a contract with the National Archives. So they required us to use Gutenberg because they were coming from WordPress. So they like the experience of Gutenberg. So they required, you need to use Gutenberg. But we were trying to push other things like maybe Layout Builder Paragraph, but they said no, it should be Gutenberg. So at that point, I started my journey trying to learn how Gutenberg is working, how was the latest version working because the last time I test Gutenberg it was maybe five years ago, and it was not a good experience for me as a developer, and maybe for the content editors, the same thing. So yeah, at that moment, we start working with Gutenberg and trying to see maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But uh, in the process, as you can see, those phases, this is was, th that was the process that I, f that I follow. At the beginning, I didn't like. They required us to, to use Gutenberg, but then at some point, I said, yeah, they are providing really good tools to integrate with Drupal, with the templating system. As a developer, it was a good thing to find. And at some point, we started loving that Gutenberg was really well integrated with Drupal. We were able to use uh, really uh, good things in the, in the theme inside and in the, in the back end side. So at the end, we said, yeah, Gutenberg is working really well right now. And it was a good decision because right now they are able they are not really uh, technical people from the other side, so for us to provide a really easy to use content editor is a really good thing. So yeah, that was our journey to, to adapt Gutenberg. And as you told you before, right now the National Archives is using Gutenberg for all the sites that they are maintaining, like the museums and things like that. So yeah, at the end, they found that Gutenberg was a really good approach and they were able to standardize the content editing experience for all those sites and they are all really happy about that because 
we can build the components for Gutenberg, and they will be able to reuse those components in all those sites. So this is the way that we came here with Gutenberg. So why USWDS? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and we're going to be, or Yvonne is going to be doing a little Gutenberg demo right at the end of this too, to kind of just show you how that fits all together. Um, why USWDS? Well, it's required, right? <laughs> but um, USWDS, USWDS is, is nice. It, it, it puts together, you have that unified design system that makes everything feel like it's government. And on, on, a, on a site like you know, the US Federal Court System or National Archives, that's very important to do. And as a bonus, USWDS takes accessibility very, very seriously. And that's something that we all do and we all should endeavor to do. Um, I'm a big proponent of single directory components, if y'all have ever heard me speak about that. Um, we're, we're using single directory components because it provides a better developer experience and it, it makes, it allows us to group a related code together, it automatically uh, generates libraries and um, creates reusable and consistent code. And that makes the development process quicker, it makes everything more consistent, and it just makes everything go a little bit smoother. So last year at GovCon, we, we launched a theme called the Governor, and we made this cool logo, by the way. <laughs> um, and it has like, it, it takes like a lot of these USWDS components and abstracts them into single directory components, which at, at times can be a little tricky because uh, the current version of USWS has like kind of the big monolith uh, SAS, a uh, big monolith CSS file. So we're attempting to kind of strip that out. Each component only uh, only loads the necessary CSS for that component. The benefits of this is that we have a bunch of USWS components already built in there. It allows you to even if you're not using this theme, you can just copy and paste these components into your own theme. And um, as I said, like it only loads the, uh, any styles only when needed. And we also built in a lot of custom components. It's, we haven't been doing a good job on maintaining it. Um, <laughs> like, like straight up, like we've been busy. Yeah. And that's something that we're hoping, it's, it's difficult, open source, right? Um, so we have a lot of work that we have put into our, in, into our client projects that we need to backport to Governor. And, and we're hoping to get that done pretty soon. Um, but if you're waiting on it, please feel free to like ping us, yell at us and let us know. But th th that being said, like if you pull it down, it has a lot of really good information and a lot of really great components that you can start using today. Um, we faced a little bit of challenges integrating with Gutenberg with single directory components. I guess this is your slide. Yeah, I think so. For, for us, the main, as, as development team, the main challenge was this. Uh, currently, Gutenberg is a really interactive experience. I will, I will show you later. We will try to do a live demo as well. So um, I will show you later. It's really, really, really great experience for the content editors. That's the best experience that you can provide. But it means that all the, all the editor is working in JavaScript. So all the rendering of the components for the content editors is using JavaScript. That it means that at the same time, you cannot be using the tweak templates. So you need, to, you need like to applicate the code in some way to provide a good editorial experience and then provide a good uh, development experience in the other side. So for us, that, that was the main challenge. So we found some ways to overcome that and to be able to sync the both things in, in the same process. Uh, by the way, we are also the contributors of the Gutenberg USWDS module. That is just a library of USWDS components for Gutenberg. And the same thing that <laughs> Mike just mentioned, uh, we provide this module, but we didn't maintain it so well, but we have developed new components that we will integrate later. And we have, uh, already we have at least the roadmap for the next version because we identify in this process which things can be improved in the, in the module architecture. So yeah, this is another good thing. We are already contributing all those components for anyone to use in other uh, websites. So for the first part, uh, how did we approach uh, the how, how we will 
the, um, the way that we can send the information from the Gutenberg component to the single directory component. So this looks like a really complex thing, but at the end it is like a simple trick thing that all developers know how to do. So at the end what we did here is that, as you can see, we are just extracting the attributes for the block in Gutenberg and sending those attributes to the, to the trick uh, using the, the single directory component. So for us, it's not like a weird development experience because it's the same experience that all developers are using right now. They are already overriding the templates and uh, putting this code in the templates to send the variables to the single directory components and that's it. So for the development side or the theming, or the theming side, it is the same experience. And also, Gutenberg already provides a good way to load the libraries that you are loading in the front end, also in the back end. So this is an important thing because the, the main, <laughs> the main uh, marketing thing about Gutenberg is that they promise that they are a real WYSIWYG. So if you are not able to emulate the same styling in the editorial part, it means that you are not providing a real WYSIWYG. So Gutenberg already provides this, so you can just um, load all your libraries or your components. In this case, we are reusing, as you could see, the pattern for the things from that start with SDC slash, SDC slash. Uh, this is like we are extracting the pattern from the single directory components, so we are not defining new libraries. We are just loading the single directory components libraries into the Gutenberg editor. So this is really easy, and you can decide which Gutenberg you, ma you want to include in the editorial part. And this is the part from Mike. So um, USWS out of the box comes with a number of SAS variables, that uh, SAS color variables that like obviously map to various different components. We have the, uh, uh, a use case where we want to be able to change the color scheme uh, for the various different sites. Use it, but we want, of course, the same code base, right? So this is like a little, a little complicated with SAS, or, or actually like almost very complicated with SAS. What we ended up doing was we ended up using the uh, power of CSS custom properties or CSS variables, and we're mapping, we have a couple abstraction layers uh, for our CSS custom properties, and um, this is the primitive abstraction layer right here. You can see we're mapping these directly to uh, USWDS colors. And uh, our next level, we have kind of more of a theme layer. I don't really know what to call this. I have, I've been having design token um, CSS variable conversations with any, anyone. <laughs> and so if, if y'all want to talk about this, we can, we can work, we can talk through it. But this is what has been working for us right here. We have, um, we have several different groupings, you know, like one for like different surf surface colors right here. So the sur you can see like at the top we have a surface primary and then we have a text on surface primary. That's really, really useful because if you group those with that, you can, uh, you can be 100% confident that you're gonna meet your minimum accessibility guidelines and you also are 100% confident that the design is remaining consistent throughout the throughout the website, and you, you can um, f you can easily like abstract these to like CSS classes or something like that too. The uh, example on the bottom just sh shows multiple text colors on one surface color, but you can also um, because they're grouped together. I don't have to I don't have to manually check contrast on that, which is like super nice. So uh, we have a couple demo. We have uh, Yvonne's demo, and I, I can uh, walk you through a couple additional uh, uh, code stuff within the editor. And then, if you all have any questions, uh, start thinking of them. Okay, so let's go with this. Let's take the risk of doing a live demo. Yeah. Okay. So, as you could see right now, maybe you haven't seen before this. This is the the Gutenberg editor in action. It's really like. We were similar that we were seeing in the experience builder, the, the common pattern that you have here, the editorial part, and then you have some options in the right side, and then you will be able to control the components from that right panel. So I will do that. I will start adding some USWDS components. So I just need to 
type slash, or maybe I will add some columns here. And then I will select maybe two columns to add some cards in it. And maybe, let me see, card. And I will place one card here. And then I will go to the media library, as you could see. Gutenberg is well integrated with the media library as well. So we can select some of these. And then again, define the title, title uh, one and the content. And I will do the same for the other part. So I will add a second card and I will add another image here. Then title two could be, sorry. And as you could see, as I told you before, this is a really good editorial experience because you are seeing the card there. You as long as soon as you click on the things, the things are happening right there. You are not waiting for Ajax loads in the behind the scenes or something weird. So this is the content for the other card. And then suppose that now you want to use another component, maybe an accordion. Those components are in the Gutenberg US WDS module. So you can start just adding some headings to this accordion. So as you could see, the styling looks really great so far because you, you have like an impression of the final result. So heading one and the content for this one, the content. And I will add another ones here below. So this could be the heading two. Maybe just add the number and the content. And look at this, we, we were uh, in Gutenberg, this is really interesting, but at the same time, you can provide like a, like a version of the component when it is selected and ready for editing, and another version of the component when you deselect the component to see the final re results. So in this case, when I select the, when I click out, you will see that the headings are looking like a real, like a real uh, accordion. But now if I click again, I can see the content of this, and do edit here, and at the same time, I will show you now how we can provide even more options to those uh, components. So I will create another card here, but in this case, I will select the other layout for the card that is provided by USWDS. So I will select this flag layout that is like a horizontal, and I will start adding things in the same way. I will insert here. Um, the card, and then the content for this. And we provide an option for the, the call to action. So you can enable more settings here for this block. So as soon as I select this block, as you could see, the right panel is showing me just the options for this component. So I will select to show new button, and this is the so this is a real great editorial experience for them. I, I think that that's the reason they were requiring us to use Gutenberg because this is nice for, for a content editor. This is the best experience that you can have. And that's it. Now I can just set a name for this, uh, my content, I don't know. And I can save it. And as you could see right now, it is looking really good. And when I save it, you can see that it looks pretty similar that the things that I was seeing in the, in the back end. So this is the good thing. And in the front, it is using single directory components because we were able to connect all those things together. We were able to connect the Gutenberg component with the single directory component, and both things are working in the same, with the same styling, with the same uh, libraries. So as you could see, that's really nice, and this is the way that it, that it works. That's awesome. So I'm going to uh, just show you a little bit of code and just how we're organizing our components, which isn't like anything super novel, but if, you've, if you're not familiar with single directory components, it'll give you an idea of what's going on. And then I'll also kind of uh, walk you through some of the CSS variable stuff, which once again was like a little, a little complicated, but I can walk you through it. So that's Drupal core. We don't want that. And all right, so this is... Uh, this is the code base right here. So the first thing that I want to just show, like if you're not familiar with uh, single directory components, your single directory components are always going to be in the components directory within um, your theme or your module. 
And with that, within that, you can, you can kind of create your own arbitrary directory structure. We have ours pretty simple right now. We have a custom directory, and then we have a USWDS directory. And then these, USW, these are standard USWDS uh, components that we have. And if you were to go into some of the CSS, you can see we're pulling in the uh, styles via SAS, and we're, we're getting, we're kind of drilling down through the breadcrumb uh, styles and only to the breadcrumb specific styles. If we just do something like importing the breadcrumb, it also, it'll re-import all the font settings, it'll re-import like a lot of layout stuff, which is already included, which is already being served to the page, so we don't need that. Um, so yeah, so we have a bunch of components right here. We have a bunch of custom components, and then we tie them all together uh, into Gutenberg using the gutenberg.yaml file that we have. So it's your theme name.gutenberg.yaml, and you can see that like right here, these are the automatically generated libraries from STC that we pull into Gutenberg. Now, uh, beware, because single directory components was made stable in Drupal 10.3, which is gonna be released in like a month or two, this is gonna change. I'm not quite sure what it's gonna change to, I haven't looked it up, but wh where it says SDC slash USC gov, it's gonna have a different pattern here, but that being said, uh, once that is set, it's not ever gonna change again, and it should be very simple to change. Um, beyond this, like I, uh, I talked a little bit about the, um, the uh, CSS variables. You can see at the top, up here, instead of just adding it to the root element, we're adding it to the US, usgov-root, which, which is a CSS class that we add onto our front end HTML element. And then we're also adding it to Gutenberg. So these styles are available within Gutenberg. And at that point, uh, you can kind of just see that we have, in addition to like the, uh, the colors that are grouped based on surfaces, we have a number of accent color, link colors, form colors, and borders. This right now is like a happy medium. Like, as I mentioned earlier, uh, talking about design tokens, talking about your schema for the design tokens, talking about your naming conventions, it's all really, really complicated. I've been, ta I've been having like a lot of thoughts on this. And what else I discovered is that you don't know how bad your ideas are until you try them out. <laughs> so like, this is not our first round at this light. Like, like I have refactored this several times, trying to get something good, trying to get something that's gonna work, maybe not for just this, this project, but for our next yeah. project, you know? And, and we're having, I've been having discussions with our designers so we can kind of normalize even, even within Figma to, to work with us. And um, yeah, so that's basically the gist of it. Are you ready for questions? Yeah. So, uh, are there any questions or complaints? <laughs> complaints go to Kirsten. I will take your questions. <laughs> right, go ahead. How, is, how are those components in Gutenberg Save the Database? That's a good question. How are the components in yeah. Gutenberg Save the Database? Go ahead. Uh, the Gutenberg module is just storing the information in just one field, the body field. And what it does behind the scenes is that you use some comments in the HTML to detect the, the, the components. So it is like wrapping the HTML tag. For example, you have a table, but they are wrapping the table in a comment with some specific values that it recognizes when you need to load the things in the, in the editor. Wow. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, so you showed that as the Gutenberg editor. Yeah. Uh, The, the question? Yeah, what do you call that, those two tiles? Ah, yeah, this, this is like a card component from USWDS, yeah. And so, the equal will be a template for that component, but that is the equivalent of the tiles in the Gutenberg editor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, those components or those uh, single instances of the component, like the card, like the USWDS card, if we are able to reuse those components in other place or if they are just for a single use in a single node. The good thing about Gutenberg, and that's the reason why we end up 
loving it, loving uh, Gutenberg, is because it has a feature called reusable blocks. So you can create just your custom patterns can you using. That? Yeah, maybe I can try to do it really fast. I, It'll probably break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you can select the, the components uh, as an, in other editor. You can just go here, select the components. Let me try if this time it works. Maybe I can just try to drag. I don't know why. Ah, uh, these are the columns. So I will save these columns as a reusable component. And I will call it a, maybe a two docs. <laughs> and then I will try to create a new um, node, and I will try to reuse this one. So it is possible. So let me go back, and let me save it later. Okay, and I will try to create a new node here. And I will try to find my two docs. And they are there. Yeah, uh, you can just go here to the plus icon and then you can see your reusable blocks in, in here. So yeah, that, it, it's really powerful. Gutenberg is really powerful and we have been found, we, we have found really good ways to integrate Gutenberg with Drupal. I have contributed a lot of uh, modules to the ecosystem to be able to embed other nodes like galleries and things like that inside Gutenberg. So yeah, it's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, what the question is, uh, if um, in the past experience that you have, uh, you noticed that Gutenberg is not, it, it was not good enough uh, maybe dealing with some uh, weird things that you put in the HTML or in the content editing experience. So yeah, right now in the, in the latest versions, they are doing a really good job. So I've been trying really complex things in Gutenberg, trying to, trying to as you said before, uh, try to add in a space in or other or things in the in the in the components, and yeah, you can you can store uh, those things as variables in some way. They they are able to handle that, and you are able to send those to tweak templates. So that's really great as well because you can recover those values, and then you can process those values uh, like an other tweak thing. Yeah, you can access the source code. Uh, even here, you can see the in the in the editor. Let me see if we. You can see the code editor, and you will see how it is working now. Right now, this is as a reference. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. And uh, right now, I can block the. I can break the reference, and it will become the two cards. Right now, it is the reference to the other to the original reusable block, but I can break the the link to the original one and it will work as a regular one, as a regular block. Uh, yeah, maybe it was it was before. This is another good question. Uh, this is another challenge that we have. I create this module that is called Drupal uh, sorry, Drupal HTML processors because this is another difficult thing to try to make the people to migrate to Gutenberg because they said we already have our content in another CMS or we already have our content using another strategy. So for one of the use cases, we needed to migrate content from other CMSs to Gutenberg. So the easier way to do that because Gutenberg tries to grab the HTML tags was trying to scrape those tags and convert them into Gutenberg components. So I create this module that is, um, that is called good, uh, HTML processors. Let me see if we can find it. It is a, it is in a dev version. But uh, what it does, initially we create just a, like a fit stamper, something similar, that you can send the HTML code and it will try to generate the Gutenberg components from it. And as a developer, you can create your own plugin to process a specific tag and convert it in a specific Gutenberg component. 
So yeah, this is the, the, the strategy. And the Gutenberg maintainers like it, so they, maybe they will like to contribute to this idea. Uh, the question was, is uh, Gutenberg is providing default components or do you need to build everything from scratch when you install Gutenberg? Yeah, uh, the, the answer is Gutenberg provides some default components, so you will be able to start with some default media and text uh, uh, component and things like that. You will have some initial, really basic ones. Say specifically for USWDS. And for USWDS, you have the module. Gutenberg USWDS, we will integrate the new ones that we are uh, developing, developing, but right now you have at least five. You have process list, you have card, accordion, uh, summary box, and other Gutenberg, uh, other USWDS components. Yeah. Do, you, do you disable any default Gutenberg components? It is possible. Uh, the question was if it is possible to disable or if you need to disable the default components from Gutenberg, it is possible from the admin, from the, for the administration, uh, you are able to disable some uh, Gutenberg default USWDS, uh, sorry, Gutenberg default components, so you can in some way to prepare your own library and avoid the people to use, for example, if you create a new version of a table, you can disable the default table for them just to use your version of the component, so it is possible to, to do that. All right, uh, one more in the back. Nope. Yeah, uh, the question was if, uh, if we are using Gutenberg for everything. <laughs> so yeah, basically the answer is no, the answer is the, the editors still need some content types using the uh, legacy, or not the legacy, the regular Drupal way, like forms, having some specific fields, but suppose you have an event content type, you need dates to be uh, required, you need some fields to be in that specific order. So for those use cases, Gutenberg is not the, the recommended way, but the good thing is that we can just create like a content type called a flexible page or landing page or in that content type you can enable the full Gutenberg experience and that will be the content type they will be using to create those beautiful marketing pages and campaign pages or things like that. All right, well, uh, thank you everybody. <laughs> Good job. Good demo. All right, so before we jump into our um, uh, table topics, oh, this is moves, okay, it's on wheels. Um, uh, so this is your last chance to vote on the topics. We've got a few tied ones at the moment, um, but wanted to give a little bit of opportunity um, for yeah, our, uh, some of our um, previous talkers to come up and answer some more questions um, and uh, share the good news, yeah. I did the talk on a chatbot. There's no questions. Uh, I do, I want to make a, a correction to what I said. Uh, somebody asked about the module being released on Drupal.org and my answer is correct. It, there is no mo module. That module is not released right now. We are planning and discussions of um, talking about what to release because uh, it, the, the prompt engineering part of it is, is what, where a lot of the, the magic happens and so try to release it so that it's useful to the community. So. It is there, it's in the plans. Any other questions for any of our previous speakers? I was that or start voting.
All right, folks. So this is how the next um, portion of the uh, summit is going to go. Uh, this is our, our table topics section. Um, and so we're going to have, uh, we've got five topics. Uh, it's going to be accessibility, uh, AI. We're going to kind of shove the vertex AI and the policy together. Um, uh, media management. Uh, PDF, alternatives. PDF alternatives, very exciting. Uh, <laughs> And then centralized versus decentralized content management. We are so excited. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to have five tables, uh, and we're going to have five 20-minute sessions. Um, and so you will have a, an opportunity to uh, chat about each of the five topics. Uh, and so what we're going to do is basically just push two of the tables together for each of these. So we're going to have kind of um, five bigger um, tables uh, for that. Um, Oh, right. <laughs> um, and so, and we're going to have um, uh, the giant post-it easel uh, notes at each of the big tables. So if you sit in front of the note, it's got sticky stuff on it, so it can't move. Um, you should take notes uh, during your 20-minute session. Uh, and then the, uh, after we finish the fifth session, um, someone at each of the tables will give a, a quick two to three minute share out of just what is on your post-it note. Um, so if you, uh, so <laughs> we were joking, um, be uh, uh, choosy in which one you sit at last. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, that's what we're gonna do. Um, and what should we, uh, two, two, I think we have 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. So yeah, okay. Maybe you can when you want one, two, or the Yeah, two, two, and then maybe the the back one together. I think probably makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, and this is going to be like musical chairs, so everyone is going to move, um, and we encourage you to uh, not move as like a whole table to the next topic. So to kind of mix and match uh, and talk to new people over the next um, session. Uh, and then during this, uh, we don't have an organized break um, for the rest of the time, and just expect you, uh, you're all wonderful adults, and know when you need a break. So you can feel free to take it whenever you need. Um, and so we're gonna have, uh, up here will be uh, accessibility. Um, uh, the next section will be, we'll say AI. Uh, in the back, we'll have media management. Uh, up in the right middle, or over here, we'll have uh, PDF alternatives. Uh, and then up here, in this section, we'll have the centralized versus decentralized uh, content management. Um, and so we'll take a little bit to um, get maneuvered and get the tables um, in a nice way, uh, and then we'll get started. So.
Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and start our 20-minute timer. Um, so we've got uh, accessibility, uh, AI, uh, media management, PDF alternatives, uh, and then uh, content management up here. And so we'll take 20 minutes, uh, and then we'll uh, rotate uh, and kind of scatter and new tables and talk. Uh, so 20 minutes. Um, and the one thing we've kind of been saying is like, you don't need to necessarily like go around and introduce yourself, just because uh, we only have 20 minutes of time. So maybe just say, you know, hi, uh, hi, I'm Jake, and I want to talk about this, um, but not like don't, don't do a full circle introduction. So, okay. all right, everybody, thanks.